This lesson is for section 6.7 and 6.8 in our textbook. So we're actually going backwards and going back into exponential equations. Now what we're going to be doing today is solving exponential equations with logs. So um, our first objective, like I said, is to solve exponential equations by using the definition of logs. Um, and our second objective is to be able to differentiate between two types of equations. So sometimes exponential equations can be written as the same base, right? And other times they can't, and when they can't be written as the same base, base, that's when we use logs. Okay, so here I've got the definition of the logs. Make sure that you're comfortable with going from log form to exponential form, because that's what you're going to be doing quite often when you're solving exponential or log equations. So let's begin first with discussing when you can and can't write with the same base. So sometimes when you're solving an exponential equation, you have to use logs. Now there are two types of exponential equations. You have those that can be written with the same base and those that cannot. And when they can't be written with the same base, that's when you use logs. So I've got two different examples here. One where you are using the same base and one where you're not going to be able to use the same base. So for example, if I see 4 to the x equals 32, I don't use logs at all. I just rewrite 4 as 2 squared to the x equaling on the other side 2 to the fifth. Because I have the same base, I can equate my exponents, so 2x equals 5, and x would equal 5 halves. Now, in the next example, no matter what I do, I can't rewrite 31 with a base of 2. So in this case, I'm going to use a log. So by the definition of a log, I'm going to redefine this and say log base 4 of 31 is equal to my exponent x. Now, even though it looks like we didn't do a lot of work here, we actually just solved for x. Notice that x is all by itself, right? That's all you need to do when you solve for a variable is get it alone. And we have log base 4 of 31 equals x. So this is our solution here for number 2. Now, you might not think that you, you know, solved for anything, but you're finding here the exact solution. Eventually, we're going to teach you how to use your calculator to approximate it, so you'll get a decimal here. Because if you look at um, these two examples, the reason why I picked these two here is that 4 raised to the 5 halves power is equal to 32. 5 halves is 2 and a half, right? So 4 raised to some other number, it's going to be smaller than 2 and a half, right? So maybe like 2.4, blah, 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 should equal 31. So this number here is um, an approximation here, but this is the exact number. That's the exact value, um, and that's what you're searching for. Now, this was a very simple um, exponential equation that's solved using a log. I'm going to get into some other examples here where we do have a little bit more steps to take. Okay, so the first thing I do here is decide if I can write both sides of the equation using the same base. Now, in this case, I realize that I can't write 10 using a base of 5 over here. The 25 I could, but 10 can't um, be re rewritten with a base of 5. So in this case, I'm going to use a log. So based off of the definition, I say log base 10 of 25 should equal x. And because x is alone, this is actually my final answer here. Now, in number 4, um, before you want to start you know, rewriting it in log form here, let's get the 4 to the other side. Okay, so you still want to isolate x as much as possible. So I have 10 raised to the x power is equal to 1 fourth. Now in this case, um, 1 fourth could be written as a base of 2, but 10 again cannot, so I have to use a log here. So in this case, I have log base 10 of 1 fourth equals x. Now I could also um, rewrite that as just log of 1 fourth equals x because we assume that we have base 10, right? So either of these would be acceptable for my solution here. Okay, now in number 5, there's no number that I need to divide out to try to further isolate x. So what I'm going to do is use log form again and convert. So I have log the base of 2 um, to of the argument here, which is 45, is equal to negative 3x. So my exponent here was negative 3x. Now in this case, x is not solved for, right? x is not by itself. Well, if I want to further isolate x here, I simply divide by negative 3 on both sides. So my solution here is x equals log base 2 of 45 divided by negative 3. Now in number 6, um, I want to first isolate the x as much as possible, so I would get rid of this 1.23 first. So I have 5 to the x equals 10 divided by 1.23. And now if I want to get x alone here, I, I convert this, right? I'm stuck, so I convert this into a log equation. So I have log base 5 of 10 divided by 1.23 equals x. 
So it's isolated and this is my solution. So this would be the exact answer for um, number six. So in the last part of this lesson, um, instead of using the definition of a log, I'm going to show you an alternate way to solve these exponential equations, and that's by using inverses. So you have to remember that the inverse of an exponential function is actually a log. So what I mean by that is, let's say I gave you um, an equation x divided by 3 equals 2. To solve for x, I know that this is very simple for you, but you would multiply by 3, right? What you're doing here is using inverse operations because we're dividing by 3, we now multiply by 3 to get rid of that, to get x alone, and to isolate it. If I had like x plus 2 equals 3, you would solve for x by subtracting 2, right? You do the opposite operation, the inverse operation to addition, which is subtraction. So here, the same idea goes for this. The exponential um, function, that inverse, is the log. So um, what I would do here, since I see 8 to the x equals 23. This is an exponential function right now. I'm going to take the log of both sides. So I take the log base 8 on both sides. It's like multiplying by 8 on both sides. Instead, we're taking the log base 8 on both sides. Now, using our rule that we talked about in our first lesson, when we see log base 8 of 8 to the x, this drops and becomes just x, right? These are inverses of one another. These cancel out and leave you with just x. On the right-hand side, you have log base 8 of 23. Now most teachers actually prefer to teach you this way because it's a more mathematical way of looking at it. You're using inverse operations to solve. It's more consistent with how you solve normal equations. But really this is also um, can be solved just by using the definition as well. right? If I started off with the log with base 8 and use my argument 23, I would get equals x. So in this case you get the exact same solution, but here we're writing the, uh, we're taking the log of both sides. So in number eight, let's do another example, a couple examples so you understand what we're, what we're trying to accomplish here. So we're going to take the log of both sides to try to isolate the x. So we take log base 4, and when you have the argument of 4 to the x, these are going to cancel, and you're left with x. So x equals log base 4 of 7. So there is no thinking really involved in this in terms of writing it and using the definition. You just take the log of both sides. So in number nine, one more time. We're going to take log base 6 on both sides. So we're taking the log of 6 on both sides. We end up with x equaling log base 6 of 42. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson. You will get more complex with these problems, but uh, make sure you understand the basics. When you can write an exponential equation in the same base, you would use just exponential form and then solve by equating your exponents. And when you cannot write them with the same base, you must use logs. So that's the end of the lesson. I'll see you guys tomorrow in class.